Hello all, welcome back to another video. For today's video, we will be looking at this extremely useful resource that is already 4 years old. This particular GitHub page contains a C Sharp workshop that was presented back in DevCon 27. This C Sharp workshop provides hands on experience on writing custom backdoor payloads using C Sharp. This is a very important skill set as it teaches you how you can write your own loader or launcher which will be applicable and useful regardless of what C2 framework you choose to use. This workshop lab will cover several different topics and techniques and it is highly recommended to go through all of it. The authors of the workshop are highlighted in the GitHub page as well so be sure to check them out on their Twitter page. As we can see, there are several lab exercises provided in this guided workshop. Starting off with lab 1 which is pretty basic probably to get all our setup and environment ready. Moving on, the lab exercises gradually get more and more interesting. We will not be going through all of it as the workshop has provided useful step-by-step -step guide in PDF and also in PowerPoint slides. The source code of the lab exercises are also provided in the GitHub page. The most important directory, the lab guide, here it contains the PDF of the lab guide that will guide you through everything. It is so easy to follow with all the references and setup tutorial. There are also pictures provided. It's basically setting up virtual environment for Windows 10 machine and a Kali operating system. It is also mentioned here that the Windows Defender should be turned off as well. This makes sense as the workshop being a public resource all of the code will definitely be signatured and heavily detected. There are a list of programs that are recommended for download also. Okay, the first few pages will ensure that your environment and setup is well configured before starting off the hands-on lab exercises. Starting with the Hello World Lab 1, pretty straightforward. It also showcases tools that are used by the blue team to analyze the compound program. It's pretty interesting. Not forgetting that there is also the slides directory that contains the PowerPoint slides for the workshop. This is a very good introduction to all of the resources that we will be touching for the lab exercises. Be sure to check this out. Okay, let's go back to the lab guide PDF. We will not be going through all of the lab exercises as mentioned. The purpose of this video is basically to spread awareness that there are a lot of amazing free resources to get started, just like this workshop on GitHub. Let's look at the shellcode obfuscation and do that together, as I feel that it is a very practical knowledge to know. There are two different techniques listed here, XOR and AES. Let's go through the AES one. Okay, so let's go to lab 4 and get the source code. The first CS file is the XOR encryption. And the second CS file is basically the launcher file. So what it means is that you have to paste the encrypted version of the shellcode here. And this program will decrypt it and execute the shellcode. Moving on to the third file in lab 4. This should be the AES encryption one. Okay, so this third CS file basically hard codes the AES password to be pass, P-A-S-S, and it contains both encrypt and decrypt function. It will print out the AES encrypted version of the shellcode and also the original one. The last file, 4.cs file, is the launcher file for the AES encrypted shellcode. Alright, now we have an understanding of the files, Let's copy the third CS file, which is our AES encryptor. This file will encrypt our shellcode and print out the encrypted version of it. Okay, 
Let's open up the labguide.pdf again to see what is the command to compile it. We should be able to compile it using the csc.exe, which is located in the C Windows Microsoft.NET Framework 4.0 directory. Awesome! We were able to compile the CS file successfully, and now we have the aesencrypt.exe file. Looking at the CS file again, we will need to generate the shellcode that we want and paste it in here. Let's fire up our Kali OS and generate the shellcode using MSF Venom. Let's try something simple, like an exact function that will execute notepad.exe. We will need to specify it in c -sharp format. This will provide us with a shellcode in c -sharp format that we can copy and paste directly. Alright, let's paste in the shellcode into our AES encryptor so that it will get encrypted. Let's remember to rename it back to shellcode. Oh damn, this triggered the Windows Defender. We forgot to turn off Windows Defender as suggested in the lab guide. Let's quickly do that now. We can simply add an exclusion to this folder that we are working on instead of turning off the entire Windows Defender. Let's give it a try. Okay, it works now. We are able to compile the AES encryptor with the MSF Venom generated shellcode. Let's execute it. As expected, the compiled binary printed out two versions of the shellcode. The first one is the AES encrypted version of it, and the second one is the initial unencrypted shellcode. So what we need to do now is to compile the fourth CS file, which is the launcher program. We can paste in the encrypted version of the shellcode into the CS file, and it should be able to execute the shellcode. Let's do that now. Okay, let's paste in the encrypted version of the shellcode here. Let's try to compile it. Weird, there's an error. Oh no, it appears that I've pasted the code twice. What a mistake. Let's remove that and compile it again. The naming of the AES shellcode is wrong. Let's correct that. Okay, we are finally able to compile it now. Let's execute the AES launcher program. Padding is invalid. That's weird. Let's see what went wrong. The password seems to be wrong. The encryptor program is using the password of PASS and our AES launcher is using the password of password. Let's correct that. Okay, instead of spawning notepad.exe with the shellcode, let's stick with using a reverse shell payload instead. It will look nicer as a demonstration. Let's delete the AES launcher files first and start again from scratch. Let's take note of our Kali IP, which is .145. Let's generate a Metaprinter reverse shell shellcode with MSF Venom. Let's create the AES encryptor file first. Okay, let's paste in the MSF Venom generated shellcode here. It should print out the encrypted version of it. Okay, great. Now we have the AES encrypted version of the shellcode. Let's create the launcher file again. Let's take the source code of the fourth CS file in the lab folder. Let's create the AES underscore launcher.cs file. Let's copy the AES encrypted version of the shellcode and paste it in. The compilation worked. That's great. 
let's set up the listener on our Kali before we execute the aeslauncher.exe program. Alright, this should do it. Let's execute the aeslauncher.exe program. That's great, we managed to get a reverse shell callback from our Windows machine. Alright, I will be concluding the video here. I hope you all have enjoyed the video so far. If you are interested in writing custom malware loaders in C Sharp, this is really a good material to get started off with. Please help to subscribe to the channel and like the video. It will help out the channel a lot. Thanks.